Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, I do apologize for being absent for a very long time on YouTube. I kept meaning to do a video when things were going on in my life, uh, but it just seems like things have been so stalled that I just didn't feel like I had enough interesting content. But here we are, we're back. Um, so today I'm just gonna give you a little life update. Um, a lot of you guys have followed along and you know about the facility that I've been in the process of opening. Um, so I'll touch base to that first and foremost. We had a bunch of people DMing me all the time, seeing what's going on. We are just stuck in a position where we can't find fucking property. Um, coming out of the pandemic, everybody expected that there was going to be a huge opening of these large spaces in Los Angeles, you know, especially in this tech flex space area, because a lot of people working from home, companies realized that they could downsize. They didn't need all this space. So we thought there'd be an abundance of property and it's been the complete opposite. Um, even our broker that we've been working with um, couldn't have predicted what's going on. There is an extreme shortage of properties and landlords pretty much have everybody by the balls. And um, even if we have found a couple of spaces that we really loved, the terms and lease negotiations are just completely unrealistic and would pretty much cripple a business, you know, especially a startup right from the gate. So here we are, it's been 16 months. Uh, I'm still looking for property. Um, I've traveled to Miami and we've gone to Austin to check out markets there to potentially do something else. But when it's all said and done, LA is the place where we are the leaders in health and fitness. We have the most people with the most money and we have the greatest influence. So if we wanna make this a nationwide brand, our first location has to be here in LA. So. It's slow, it's frustrating, and uh, you know I, I wanted things to happen a year ago, but it is what it is, and I, I know that the right place will come along, and we just, like I said, we don't wanna sign a deal where we get ourselves into a situation where we're destined to fail. Um, you know, my investment group, they're, they're amazing, and uh, they, uh, they have my best interest, and, and obviously their best interest in mine, so they're not gonna put us in a bad situation at all. So things might be a little slower than I anticipated, but um, it'll happen, it, it's coming, and I just have to be patient and, and put it out in the universe that, that everything's gonna, gonna work out for itself. So in the meantime, um, I've been doing a lot of just kind of figuring my life out this year. Um, you know, you guys follow me, you, you, you've seen the transition that I've gone to. Everything in my life is new at this point. Um, you know, once Steffi and I separated and went through the divorce, you know, I spent 10 years with this woman. She's no longer in my life. And then I decided to retire from bodybuilding, which was, took up 11 years of my life. And with this investment deal, um, you know, I'm getting paid a, a very nice consulting fee to commit half of my time weekly onto the business, which obviously we aren't progressing anywhere. So that's been slow. And so I decided to, um, well, they asked me to, you know, obviously to, to back down my training um, so that when things did happen, I'm available to, to do whatever they need me for, to hop on calls or to go look at properties and things like that. So I went from working, you know, 12, 14 hour days to all of a sudden I'm not working. You know, I have a couple clients that I love that I'm sticking to and that's it. Um, but it's given me a lot of free time, which has been a blessing and a curse. Um, I'm a go, go, go person. 38 years of my life, all I've ever known is 100 miles an hour, you know, no vacations, no relaxation. Um, so it's been a fucking, a, a rough journey for me, honestly. I know, I know some people would, would relish to be in this situation, but I'm one of those people that continuously needs to be challenged. And um, I really feel like I've lost uh, a lot of purpose in my life and I've lost my passion. Um, you know, so I'm trying to find myself. I, I don't want to be defined by fitness anymore. Um, I love it. That's always going to be a part of me, but like, I don't want to be known as Brad Rowe, the trainer or Brad Rowe, you know, the, the bodybuilder or the fitness model. Um, you know, I want to be known for a lot more than that. And I, and I want a lot more of that out of my life, even though that's going to consume a majority of my life. I just, I don't want to focus myself on that. So I've been kind of stepping away from the industry, truly. Um, you know, I, I cut down my coaching, um, 
you know, I'm, I'm trying to evolve into this different person and I don't know what that person is. You know, I don't know what I like. I don't know what makes me happy. Um, I have a mind that races a hundred miles an hour nonstop. And so sitting at home being alone, uh, has been a challenge. You know, it's brought up depression, anxiety, everything. Um, it's been, it's been a wild ride. Um, you know, and one of the things that I really try to do this year is, is to live. Um, so I'm sure if you've seen me follow me, you've seen me go to Vegas and, and go party a ton and, and being out and about. And that's something that I never did. You know, in 10 years, I got drunk probably 10 times in 10 years. Um, you know, everything was, every single day was how can I become better as a bodybuilder? How can I become better as a worker and create financial stability for my future family. And that's the only thing that fucking mattered in my life, um, which is a blessing and a curse. And, um, you know, it, it got me to the situation that I'm in, which is a really great place to be in. But I cut a lot of people out of my life and, and I, I never found other hobbies and other passions. So this year has just been a journey of, of you know, finding out what truly enriches my soul and, and what makes me happy. And I still don't fucking know. So I mean, it's, it's been a process. But um, one thing I am grateful for is that I that I actually got out and I experienced life a little more. And I've, I've met a lot of people, made some great connections in the past year. And um, uh, one of the biggest saviors that I've found, uh, and I found this through plant-based medicine, which we're going to make a whole other video on that. But um, I got introduced to mushrooms. And... Uh, Mushrooms have really allowed me to step outside of myself and enjoy life and, and enjoy being out and being social. Um, as much as this person that I put out there, um, I'm a great people person, but that's not me. I'm an introvert. Um, I, you know, for me to go out and, and be free and dance and, and have fun, I used to have to get fucked up to get to that point, even though it's something I love to do. So, through my journey in plant-based medicine, I was introduced to mushrooms um, from spiritual work. And I, I had a shaman one day and she asked me to go to the beach and stick my feet in the sand and, and play some music I love and, and, and take these mushrooms and just really just connect with, with Mother Earth, with nature, and, and with myself, my soul. And through that experience, uh, music just felt so amazing. It was just, it was such a pleasurable experience. And for the first time I could just sit down at the beach and be present and not care about my phone, not care about what I got to do next. So it was something that, uh, me and my best friend, Josh, who you guys met in a, in a previous video, who's still out here living with me. Um, we decided like every couple weeks we'd go to the beach and, and, and do this. So, I went to the New York Pro last uh, May in Tampa and I got invited to a pool party on Sunday and I was like, hey, music sounded great on the beach with the mushrooms, so I'm gonna try the mushrooms at the pool party. And I had an absolute blast. It was, I danced my ass off for like four hours, but the best part was I was craving good wholesome food. Like I was craving sushi and fruits and things like that. And I just, started going for like this cleanse diet. Um, as you guys know, I was on keto for like three years and I was like, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to come off that. I'm going to do a diet where it's just very low protein, um, very low fat, like just trace fats and really high carbs from mostly natural sources, potatoes, fruits, vegetables. Um, you know, I'll do some sourdough bread and things like that. So I just started this diet and it's like, man, I, I, I take these mushrooms and I, and I have a great time. And then I'm craving fruit and craving vegetables and craving this clean food. And then I feel amazing the next day. I feel just mentally clear and energized, which is the complete opposite of any recreational drug that you've ever tried or any alcohol or anything like that. So I got invited to a couple of different pool parties um, throughout the summer and, and set some up. And I ended up going to Vegas like five different times and I would go, I'd drive out on a Friday night, go work out, get a good night's sleep, wake up Saturday, get another workout in, and then do a pool party all day, go get all you can eat sushi, take a nap, go to the club, dance all night, 
wake up in the morning, go back to the pool party, dance all day, go get all you can eat sushi, go back to the hotel room, shower, drive back to LA, get home by like 11.30, go to bed, and I'd be up Monday morning for a 6 a.m. client feeling like a million bucks. And so it was, it was a great experience for me to get out, have fun, enjoy myself, do things that I love to do. I love to dance um, and just live more. So that's, that's kind of been the theme of this summer is just stepping out of my comfort shell and uh, you know, experiencing things that I, that I know I loved. So, um, you know, for everybody that asked me how the hell I stayed in great shape during all this phase of partying and everything so much was the, the partying actually helped keep me in, in good shape. You know, you're dancing, you're doing cardio, you're not taking in any crap food, you're not doing anything like alcohol. People don't realize it's not the calories from alcohol that screw you up. It's the fact that it reduces protein synthesis or inhibits your ability to recover and it reduces your ability to oxidize fat cells, AKA you can't break down fat, so you're just gonna store more fat cells. So alcohol has a much bigger effect than just the calories and the hangover you have, and those effects last for days on end. So with mushrooms, um, you know, it's, it's all natural. It's, you know, you, there's no hangover, there's, there's no secondary effects. And for me, um, you know, the, the way I approach it is, really I, from a spiritual sense, um, you know, I, I don't just say, Hey, I'm just going to take a bunch of mushrooms, and get fucked up. No. Um, for me, it's, you know, I, I have intention when I take them and those intentions are to release my inhibitions, to allow me to be free so that I can enjoy myself and I can enjoy the moment. Um, so I approach everything in my life now from a much different perspective than I ever have. Um, and just trying to be just this better person that, that I ever have. So, uh, you know, I'll, it's been uh, 14 months now since the separation and um, I'm doing better, you know? Um, um, it, it was, there was, there was a lot of fucking dark, 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 deep times there. I mean, there was an eight month span where I had, had no, no will to live at times. Truly, um, you know, I'd, I'd work, I'd come home, be like six o'clock and I'd just be like, fuck it, I'm going to bed because I just didn't even want to be in myself, you know, with myself at that time. So uh, having my roommate, my best friend move in with me, obviously that helped. Um, and, you know, doing the plant medicine and everything that, that, that helped me work through some childhood traumas and we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, but time, you know, and, and finally uh, I hit a point uh, early in the spring where I became grateful, you know, I became grateful that, that Stephanie made that choice, um, to choose both of our happiness over just staying together because that's what you're supposed to do. Um, and, uh, I'm so grateful that she did that because truly I was, I was miserable. Um, not miserable, miserable, but like, you know, the, we, we weren't, meant to be together at that point. We were, we were best friends, we were great roommates, but we both wanted more from someone else and, and, and deserved more from a partner in our lives and, and just wanted different things in life in general. We weren't on the same path at all. And uh, you know, there's this old school part of me that just committed to commitment, you know? So I'm truly at a point where I'm grateful that she made that choice and, and she's happy and I'm so happy that, that she's found happiness and, and someone that supports what she wants in life. And for me, um, you know, I, I'll be honest, you know, I'm, I'm probably still in love, you know, it, it's, uh, and, and that's not a bad thing. Um, you know, but as far as like getting out there and dating, you know, I, I Early in the spring, I was like, you know, I'm gonna date. I'm I'm ready to do this. And I tried the online dating, and that shit lasted for like six weeks, and I got so turned off. It's just we're in a fucking culture where it's uh, being a conservative individual in a hookup culture is a true death. You know, I'd be texting a girl for like three or four days, and then all of a sudden, she's like asking for nudes or like wanting to send nudes to you, and it's like, whoa, whoa can, can we sit down and have coffee? You know, can we can we connect intellectually first? Um, the way to my heart and the way to me is to show your emotional maturity and to show that you're, 
uh, that you can carry on a deep conversation, you know, and just by showing me your boobs and your ass is not going to turn me on. Um, so it's, uh, I just got really turned off by it. And then I just kind of thought, you know what, I've been in relationships my whole life. You know, I was with Steph for 10 years. Uh, I was, you know, in and out of three year relationships with like six months off. I need to learn to love myself, you know, and that that's part of this other personal journey is going through and, and, and the plant-based medicine is, has opened my eyes too. So um, I have no desire to date, you know, I'm, I'm on this journey of learning how to love myself and learning how to live in myself and, and enjoying life and having no ties with anybody. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's lonely at times. I miss companionship. Uh, I miss nurturing. That's one of those childhood things that I'm, that I crave is nurturing, but I know that this is what I need for me. And when I come out of it on the other end, um, whoever's lucky enough to, to get me is going to get a really amazing man. That's uh, a much upgraded version of themselves and has a lot to offer and is ready to, uh, create a great life with someone else and, and, and lift each other up. Um, so that's where I'm at right now in my life. It's, um, you know, I'm, I'm learning to love myself, learning to be with myself, um, trying to learn what patience is, um, trying to learn to not allow things that I can't control, control my emotions. I'm trying to uh, detach myself from attachments, things that, that give us pain and misery. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's a, I'm nowhere near where I want to be, but I'm a lot fucking further than I ever was. Um, and it's just continued work every single day just to, to be the best version of myself. And, um, I really feel like I have this new calling in life. Um, uh, you know, I've always felt that I need, uh, that I enjoyed being of service to others and through my service was helping people with health and fitness, you know, whether it be bodybuilding or whatever. Um, obviously my focus on my center is way more than just fitness itself. It's, it's, it's this holistic approach, um, to improving every part of our body inside and out. Um, but there's really this mental part of it, um, and this, you know, mind, body, soul kind of holy trinity that I'm, that I'm learning to embrace. And, and I'm really trying to put my passion into that. And I feel like I've, I've been called to help people on a much deeper basis. And I just don't know that approach yet. I don't know how I'm going to go about it. Um, but you know, like, like just watching a Tony Robbins video, I was like, just so called to some type of work like that, that I can help people through their ruts, through their, their depression, their anxiety, their, their traumas, and just help them become the best version of themselves. Um, but I know first and foremost, I need to fix me and I need to be my best version before I can put myself out there to others. But, um, it's, it's been a, a very unique year and, uh, when I talk about everything in the plant medicine, I'll, I'll go on a little more in depth into that. But, um, in the meantime, I'm still recovering from the knee surgery. Um, that's been, uh, another challenge this year of my life. Uh, as you guys know, um, I call myself La Cucaracha, the cockroach, because no matter what injury I had throughout my career, it never slowed me down. I, I've always healed that extremely rapid pace that doctors can't even believe how fast it's been. And, um, this knee has been the first thing that's ever really challenged me. And it broke me for a while because when this happened, I was in this very empty place. You know, I was still at the very beginning of, of this, this journey of becoming a better self. Uh, everything had changed with, with the business. You know, I just slowed down, uh, purposely slowed down with things. So I was kind of bored. And when I got hurt, I was like, fuck yes. I'm like, this is something to focus on. This gives me passion and purpose. Um, so I put my heart and soul into this knee. I, I did everything under the sun. I have a hyperbaric chamber. I did stem cells. I was, you know, I, I made it my full-time job to, to repair and recover as fast as I could because I was also in a situation where there was a lot of eyes on me. I'm very blessed with some of my clientele base to have where I had a lot of professional athletes that were looking at me and seeing how fast I was recovering. So I know that by me recovering fast was just amazing marketing for my modalities and, and my business that I, that I want to open. Um, and you know, probably like six weeks into recovery, just 
I just, I knew something was wrong. Something wasn't going right. But I just kept pushing through, pushing through, pushing through doctors. You know, my surgeon, who's one of the best surgeons in the world, just, he was like, I, I don't know what to tell you. He's like, maybe it's because, you know, your knee's too strong, you know, your, your quads are too strong. It's creating all this tension. I don't know why you're having all this pain and inflammation. Nothing makes sense. And finally, um, I had transitioned from this sports therapist that I was working with to the, the old massage therapist that I typically use. And she was a little more aggressive and she found this spot like right above my knee um, where there was a nerve that had been trapped and she stuck her thumb in there and I fucking shot through the roof. And immediately I called my doctor and I set up an appointment and I told him. So what we realized is that there's a nerve um, that's trapped in either scar tissue or a suture and it's just continuously sending a pain response. And as you guys know, when things send a pain response, you get inflammation. And inflammation can be good to initially uh, inhi uh, attract um, uh, growth factors, but too much inflammation actually blunts the healing process. So not only is my range of motion and everything suck and scar tissue is getting built up because of all this, but the tissue itself wasn't healing properly in the right area. So they sent me to a pain management specialist and we've tried a couple different procedures to try to quell that nerve, to try to desensitize it. Um, and I've made some pretty good progress, but still dealing with a significant amount of inflammation in the knee. Um, so the beauty is once I found out that it wasn't anything I did or it wasn't anything I didn't do, it was something that was out of my control, I was able to relax. I was, you know, I was broken over this. Um, and I just realized, hey, you know what? Whatever happens, happens. When it heals, it heals. I'm not gonna stress about this. Um, so I took a lot of pressure off myself and off the recovery. And I'm just kind of just rolling with the flow of things. You know, I'm still being diligent, doing the things I should do, but it's not a, I'm not stressing myself. I don't have this deadline. You know, I had this July 2nd deadline that I wanted to be able to dunk a tennis ball by. And July 2nd, I could barely even fucking bend my knee. You know, the, the strength's great. The, the size is coming back. Um, but the pain and inflammation and lack of range of motion because of that is, is still frustrating. But again, um, I'm just, I'm no longer stressing about it. It'll happen. When it happens, it happens. And I'm just going to go with the flow with that. So uh, in the meantime, that was one of the other things that kind of held me back because I wanted to try to focus on being an athlete again. You know, I'm, I'm, I, I'm sick of training like a bodybuilder. I want to get back to being an athlete, but I can't run or anything right now that well. So, um, you know, it, it, that kind of really sucked the wind out of me. So I went through this phase. Um, it really happened a couple weeks ago where um, my mom came and visited and uh, we had a great time but we spent a week on the beach together and uh, being around my mom, God bless her, uh, just triggered some childhood insecurities and shit. And then that brought up a lot of other pains and all this other stuff. And so I got sent in this downward spiral, um, you know, the past month or so. And uh, so I just got back from a, another retreat last week and, and I've been working with a healer and taking some extra steps to, to help get me through this. But um you know, the beauty is, uh, on the other side of this is, is freedom from, from those traumas. So I know that, uh, I have some more dark work to do and, uh, I know that it's going to be painful, but, um, I already know the progress that I've made thus far and I'm excited to, to, to make even more and, and to be better and, um, just to become this whole pretty much new human being on the other side of all this on every level of my life. So that's a brief update. That's what's going on in my life. Um, so thank you guys for tuning in. And I promise I'm going to start doing more videos. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bust out like two a month. So thank you very much. And uh, I'll see you guys soon.